scratching people down here. That's not very nice, is it? No, my camera's just gone completely dead. It's died? Yep. Let's have a look. Completely. From full to dead in literally 30 seconds. I can see the little... Just, it's see the way it's flashing between colours. Yeah. It's because it's going from as low as 6 up to 10. Morecambe, a seaside town situated on the west coast of England, is best known as a popular British holiday destination and its connections with Eric Bartholomew. Morecambe is also famous for its vast bay area which sits overlooking the nearby Lake District. However, we are here to investigate one of Morecambe's most prominent and oldest standing buildings to date, the Morecambe Winter Gardens. Situated on the Morecambe Promenade, the Morecambe Winter Garden started its life as the Victoria Pavilion. The current building was designed by architects Mangle and Littlewood and was constructed alongside the newly named Oriental Ballroom. The theatre would be host to many well-known acts such as the comical duo Laurel and Hardy, the Rolling Stones, George Formby and Gracie Fields. However, the glory wouldn't last as the theatre started running into serious financial difficulties. After many closures and opening attempts, the building was finally left until 1986 when the Friends of the Winter Gardens were formed who planned to bring the theatre back to its former glory. After looking around the building for a while, we met up with Peter Wade who was going to give us a guided tour of the building. However, almost as soon as we began our walk around of the theatre, we began to hear strange sets of noises coming from the ladies' bar area. So that was over that way. I thought it was over there. Yeah, I, the, the other one I think was, but it was just one. Could be water dripping. It's in the direction of the ladies' bar, which is should we go on, which should is go our down next there, destination. Let's go. <laughs> Definitely heard that, did you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's hitting something over over the head. Was it, that, was, it, above us. was it that or was it louder what we heard before? Could have been that. It could have been. It's more constant now, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. I think we'll say that's debunk there because I think that is possibly just that. Probably is. Yeah. yeah. Although it has got more because it was I mean it wasn't it wasn't any noise, was there when no. the first came? The old one or two. I'm sure the first one was down there though. When I heard well, it, it sounded. It's possible, yes. Does anyone ever hear any like residual music playing? Well, or anything? We've, uh, we do try from that. We had a group last week, for instance, mm. who who'd got um, various tracks of George Formby and Vera Lynn. Try and get things thing. going. Yes. Although, um, the best way to, to, for that to happen is actually, rather than having recorded music, to actually have a go at singing. And, um, Craig? Uh, I'll <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Last chorus, yeah. We had um, um, a group quite a few years ago now, um, but uh, half the group were, were right at the top of the gods, which is the place we'll go yeah. to later on, and the other half was down on the stage, and um, they were singing... Um, so one of the old music hall songs, which mm. uh, you 
you're probably too young to have ever heard of, possibly. Mind, but um, <laughs> a, um, it's a song about a lady called Daisy, 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 uh, on a bicycle made for two. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer. I've heard that, yes, I've heard it. Yeah, so we had two lots of people singing this song, and the interesting thing was that um, upstairs, where there are some staircases leading up, you could actually hear some extra voices joining in. Right. So that was um, quite interesting. I think you should definitely try playing some kind of go. Yeah. some kind of music or something. Yeah. And then just stopping it suddenly. Yeah. And seeing if anything. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Be, yeah. Try that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go on again. We'll go uh, past the dripping to uh, the room through here. Oh, is this actually outside? Let's go out my step just here. I had no idea this was even. <laughs> wow. It's very nice if it's not raining. Yeah. <laughs> on that view, on a wet night or a wet day. But you can see right across the bay, you can see the lights of range. The Lake District over there. This is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's very strange walking around here, isn't it? Because you know that at one point it was very happy, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. So this was, oh, wow. so it's been tidied up a bit now, but I think this is where the old teams went. Yeah, there they are, look. Can we get in there? Is it safe? Yes, it should be. It'd be a bit uh, dusty, but. <laughs> Ticket stubs. So look at this thing. The only thing, they don't have the year on them. They'll have a date, but they won't have a year. These look pretty old. Yeah. These ones here, look. Oh, yeah. So we've got, it gives the price. So these are 75 pence. C C70. Side dress circle. Now, that's downstairs, though, is that? That's a little bit odd. Centre dress circle. A pound. So these are these are actually not from the god seats, they're from the dress well, circle there, there. downstairs. Oh, 041. Can't be too old, can they, if they're a pound? And no, it's sort of after decimalisation. Yeah. So 75 pence, so they're uh, what, early 1970s. Yeah. After learning more about the Winter Garden's history, we headed down to the stage area where Peter would tell us about one of the ghosts who is said to reside in this area. Um, so, I'd say there's maybe the ghost of um, a stage manager, who, and this is his stage, and he doesn't like people being here on the right. stage, you know, got his permission or whatever, so <laughs> he's trying to... I'm not sure you get I thought I saw somebody sitting up there. There's so many things up there that can just catch yes. your eye. It's like two pillars, I think, just up there. Yeah. And I thought that was a person sat there. <laughs> it was now time for us to head down into the building's basement, which is said to be the home to more darker entities. People have reported poltergeist activity down here, as well as the ghostly sightings of children. So we've got a, well, an interesting floor what? to start with. So black and white tiles. And um, we're no longer in the theatre. We're in what was here before the theatre. And we're in the changing rooms of a public baths. There's lots of little cubicles there. There's more down this way um, as well. So. We have changing rooms actually on either side of the stage, so the pool's been where the stage is today. Right. So it goes on. Mind your head, don't mind the camera. <laughs> it goes on. It's quite a, a rabbit one. Is there a 
asbestos down here? Not that I know of. No, no. I think the building is too old to have actually had right. asbestos used in it. So. so what happens down here? Well, I honestly, it, I, it's just really people because of the atmosphere. I think just getting quite scared, frightened, yeah. <laughs> making the situation up in there. Yeah, it's really yeah. building up because of that. I think. Um, you know, but people What's talk. Is that you? But, but it's 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 like a tapping. I thought I heard a kind of creaking noise. Yeah, like a tapping or creaking or. Mm. It sounded like it was down there, is it? Mm. There we were. So we have, as I say, sometimes get children here. Mm. Um, but not, sometimes they won't come forward even though they're around because there's somebody else that they're frightened of them, if that thing is right. there. Right, yeah. Scurry away. Um, and there are stories of a dog. You've read about that as well. So what's... With red eyes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Somebody with an axe. Is it a hobbit or something? I don't think that's Jesus. No, I look like... <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Debunk, it's not Jesus. <laughs> After completing our walkthrough of the Morecambe Winter Gardens, it was now time to turn off the lights and begin our nighttime investigation. Before we began our investigation, we set up six lock-off cameras throughout the building. One was facing a staircase in which a woman once fell down and later died from her injuries. We also placed another camera further down the hallway on another set of stairs. Our next camera was placed down in the basement with a digital recorder placed by its side. Our last three cameras were set up on a paranormal puck device covering all areas of the stage. Each camera has a motion device or REM pod placed in front of it to help validate any occurring activity. So right now we're about to begin our investigation here at Morecambe Winter Gardens. Craig's using a full spectrum camera and I'm going to use just a basic infrared. So I'm going to go around now and see if we can just feel anything, see anything, and see where it goes from there. So we've also got Paul here as well. So he's going to be helping us navigate our way through the gardens. Help us out. <laughs> right, let's begin. Have to be really careful going up here, won't we? Yeah, no. let's, go, let's go right. No, left. Left. <laughs> I don't do it right. No. <laughs> that is a really creepy sound. No. No, my camera's just gone completely dead. He died? Yep. Let's have a look. Completely. From full to dead in literally 30 seconds. That was full of charge, wasn't it? Yep. I'll have to go and grab a spare battery. See if that was another camera on the table. Yep. Right now, something very strange happens. Cray's camera loses almost all of its battery power after only a few minutes of use. But what's even more strange is that four minutes before Cray's camera dies, our lock-off camera at the top of the stairs captures the REM pod alarming, followed by a sudden loss of its illuminator battery power. Could this be a spirit gathering energy so that it can manifest?
Let's go and change your battery. <laughs> Didn't last long. Oh, Can you turn that alarm off, please? Can you make that noise stop, please, for us? If there's somebody there, can you please make it go off again for us? After capturing no more evidence, we decided to make our way up to the gods a seating area located at the very top of the theatre. What was it, Peter? A little boy on those stairs? On the stairs behind you, yes. Is there a little boy on these stairs? If you can hear my voice, can you walk towards it, please? I thought it might have been us with the lights, but it's not. Show people at home how dark it is, Craig. Just keep the <laughs> illuminator up. That's how dark it is in here. I'm pointing it at Craig right now. I'm pointing it at Ben. That's how dark it is. What was that? It's a, uh, it's sort of like a lining fabric in the roof. Oh, there is, isn't it? Some raffles. Right. Up these stairs. Mm -hmm. Just as we were on the very top floor up in the gods, our digital recorder down in the basement was capturing an EVP straight after the REM pod can be seen alarming. We will enhance the audio so you can hear it better.
After capturing no evidence up in the gods, we decided to leave a motion activated camera pointing down the main walkway in front of the chairs. We decided to make our way down to the ladies bar area, which is said to be a very active part of the building. for atmospheric effect. Unfortunately, after 35 minutes trying, we weren't able to document any forms of paranormal activity using any of our equipment or floor camera. We decided that now would be a good time to head down to the stage area so that we could conduct our music experiment. So right now, we're just about to go onto the stage to conduct an experiment that we're gonna do. Basically, we're gonna play some music out um, through the speaker that would have been played in this theatre and see if we get a response when we pause it at random intervals. So, I'll stop the uh, EVP as well, then. Yeah. So, Craig's just gonna run an EVP now. The EVP's recording with Ben on the stage. Okay, so let's go. I'm leaning on a lamp. I know I look just like a tramp. Oh, you may think I'm hanging round to steal a car. But no, I'm not a crook. And if you think that's what I look, I'll tell you why I'm here and what my motives are. I'm leaning on the lamppost at the corner of the street in case a certain little lady comes by. After capturing no audio or visual evidence, we decided that now was the time to go down into the basement to see if we could capture any activity, completely unaware of the EVP that we had captured earlier in the night. Can you make a noise or a bang? Can we hear you speak? Who's down here scratching people? Is it you? Are you scratching people? quite frequent, wasn't it? It's getting hotter. Is it? Didn't, didn't you say, Peter, that someone, it gets hotter? Yeah, we're talking about we'll be in, in circles about people saying they, you know, one might say they get warm. And, and it's, also, it does actually feel quite warm down here. I'm quite mm. surprised, given the, uh, the wind and everything. It's quite cosy, almost. 
The REM pod's been reaching 10 degrees, everywhere around it is a good 2 degrees lower. Could you please walk up to the device in my hand? Can you make it go off for me please? We decided to try using the SB7 Spirit Box, which rapidly scans through radio frequencies, creating an endless supply of white noise. It is believed that through this white noise, spirit voices can be heard. Like a dog to you? I, I didn't hear it, no. I thought I heard it just in the. not loudly, very faintly, like a dog bark. I, I didn't hear it, no. Very, very faintly. Right now, we capture something which amazed me. If you listen closely, you can hear what sounds like a dog barking twice. Could this be the spirit of the dog? that has been seen down here on numerous occasions. And then there are stories of a dog. <laughs> You've read about that as well, so what's... With red eyes. Dog to you? I, I didn't hear it, no. I thought I heard it just in the. not loudly, very faintly, like a dog bark. I, I didn't hear it, no. Very, very faintly. Who's scratching people down here? That's not very nice, is it? Somebody just walked past behind me. Somebody here with us. No, I don't. After capturing no more evidence in the basement, me and Craig decided to make our way back up to the gods, while Peter would remain at our base room on the ground floor. It's uh, that sound of wind would not help. I, d I didn't like it here before, I must admit. Down in the basement. Is that the REM pod? It is, isn't it? Is that blue? It is white, but. 
Should we get up and get the flare on? That means the temperature's dropping. What would that be on? So you saw it now. I don't know. I'm, I'm never wrong on, on edge on investigations. I have to admit, I'm a little bit on edge on this one. I'm getting um, I've gone. I've gone really cold, like yeah. get goosebumps. Do you hear that? Blue means the temperature's going down. Because I just felt really cold yeah. then. I got proper goosebumps for the first time the whole night. Yeah. Can you feel the cold here? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very cold one. Down to 7 degrees and up to 11. Just changed on the stairs, is not it? Yeah. You can't see it on the camera, but it's... I can see that it's cold on the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. And then it's really... You can just zoom in there, see if it shows on you. It's struggling. Well, the there we go. To show camera this. Because of the variation in temperature, it's. Uh, I can see there. To, it's see the way it's flashing between colours. Yeah. It's because it's going from as low as six up to ten. That, that's why it's. It's so sudden, isn't it? Yeah. It's like two steps up from the REM pods. It's warm. Yeah. Yeah, up there. So. It's there. The steps here that you can see, they're uh, nine degrees. You come back down here. I feel really on edge out here. Mm -hmm. I feel really on edge here. I don't like it. I don't. I really don't. See, I, I feel cold now. Yeah. Right now, past where the red pot is. I feel. I feel it's definitely colder there, and I'm getting goosebumps in it. What's this? We haven't been up here. Over on the, the opposite side on the top. Should we go to the bar and then come back down? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> Got to go to the bar. Say no to the bar. <laughs> So you someone put me in a prison or a hospital in a day, this is... I don't like this up here. No. I don't know why either, it's hard to explain, isn't it? This is the worst I've felt the whole night, I've been fine pretty much. What was that? We came up here before, did we? Refreshment bar. God. Right now, we are both thrown into complete shock as to what just happened. As we were walking along the bar area, a door suddenly opens from nowhere. As soon as we started walking up into this area, we both complained about not feeling right. This was the first point in the entire night that we both felt on edge about anything and left us both completely speechless. We tried to debunk this as best we could and found no explanation as to why this door would open by itself leaving this as unexplained. <gasps> oh, 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 
mee. It's a safe something. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Who wants to go and open it? Oh, mate, my ass Jesus my Christ. Can you shut it, please? Mate. <laughs> Should I go and look in? <laughs> Should I go and look in? Jesus Christ, I gotta oh, just Oh that just uh, I'm shaking. I know, I know it's okay, oh. but there's no breeze up here. There was absolutely no reason for that to open like that. Oh, oh my god. There was absolutely no reason for that to open like that, was there? No. Did you, did you get that on camera? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. I swear to god, that wouldn't have been as scary, but I'm proper on edge up here at the minute. I mean, I, I was, neither of us were feeling right. It was, it was, it was strange. It was like, I felt like something was going to happen. I was getting really on edge. <laughs> My legs are <laughs> Honestly. Don't worry, mate. I need to go. Oh, I'm shaking. I need, I need to go to the loo. I think I'm going to wash myself. <laughs> As you say, I think it's because we were both so on edge because we felt. There's something not right up here now, at the minute. No. As soon as we walked up this back bit, there's something not right, is there? No. I feel proper on edge. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> I cannot, there was no reason for that door to open. No, not like that, not that speed. I mean, that, that, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps there, but that was properly open. Yeah. It was shut as well when we walked up. It was. After continuing our investigation through the night, we captured some strange activity on our lock-off cameras. At three hours and two minutes, our lock-off camera captured this down in the basement. At 44 minutes and 50 seconds, our lock-off camera on the stairs captured what sounds like somebody walking with a set of keys. Could this be the sound of a caretaker still doing his daily duties? At 5 hours and 23 minutes, our lock-off camera on the stairs, which was securely fastened to a tripod, seems to move sharply to the left with no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> 